Welcome to another Six Patterns video. I'm Kevin. I'm Max. And we're going to be talking to you today about one of the 25 most important pearls of pulmonary pathology. And we gathered these into topics. And the current topic we are engaging is called the importance of clinical and radiologic correlation in your interpretation of the biopsy. Right. You can only get so far with interstitial lung disease if all you have is the pathology. Right. You really need some clinical information in order to provide the best diagnosis for the clinician to treat the patient appropriately. Right. So this idea that the MDD is something that's done by the pulmonologist. That's the MDD is the multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary diagnostic, diagnostic conference or discussion. I discussion. like that too. Discussion. Because sometimes we don't have a conference. Sometimes it's just on the phone, right? Right. But you can do that yourself if you know the clinical and you know the radiologist. In my opinion, the pathologist who knows a little bit about pulmonary medicine and knows a little bit about chest CT scans is Way the ahead. person who is the best suited right. We're to at the perform center of this it. MDD. We are at the center. And we have a biopsy typically. And nobody understands the biopsy right. like we do. Right. So... Let's look at this biopsy. We've got a biopsy. 47-year-old man, shortness of breath and cough. Very common scenario. Shortness of breath and cough. Now, he had a CT scan, and it shows... Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. Yeah. Nodule. Yes. Well, he <laughs> cheated because you looked at the biopsy. Because I looked at the biopsy. And you can see there's a nodule that's kind of a hazy blue. Yeah. And a bunch of little tinier and nodules. some smaller nodules. Right. And a nodule of fresh hemorrhage, which we won't pay attention to. Artifact. Artifact. Okay, so they do a VATS biopsy. You get this biopsy, and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you're wondering to yourself, how am I going to handle this case? You get the poster out, which is right between right. Max there. and me, right there. You get the poster out, and you look at it, and you say, wow. It's also online. And it's six also patterns. in the six Got pattern. It. If you go there, you also get to see the poster. So you look at the poster, and the poster is a guide. You look at nodules. And you ask yourself, what are the nodules made of here? And I think all of you will guess that the nodules are made of lymphoid cells. Exactly. Because they look tiny, even from low magnification. And it'd be very unusual for an epithelial tumor to have this small, a delicate cellularity. Right. So if I look at the poster, the poster says, if there are lymphoid cells dominant in the nodules, you should be thinking about follicular bronchiolitis, Wegener granulomatosis, diffuse lymphoid hyperplasia of the lung, Possible. and then lymphoma. 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 Now, it, the CT scan did say the patient had some thoracic uh, mediastinal adenopathy. Uh, yeah. yeah. And we don't know if it's big adenopathy or just a little one and a half centimeter lymph nodes. But on this biopsy, we've got a five, or eight, five to eight millimeter nodule there, I suspect, right? What yeah. does it say on our... Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's probably so it's, five millimeters. Yeah, about five, six millimeters. And it's made of actually a fairly polymorphous yeah. appearing infiltrate. Yeah. I mean, we've got some small lymphocytes. We've got some plasmacytoids type cells. We've got some bigger macrophages. And I mean, there's some fibrosis in the background. There's, there's some a little fibrosis. wiry fibrosis. So this has consolidated the parenchyma. There is no lung parenchyma visible here because it's overridden by this process. So... look. So that's the nodule, and I don't know about you, but this probably needs some, some work up. Yeah. Well, you, with this many lymphocytes, you should always at do least at do least some screening. Exactly. CD3, CD20, maybe cap on lambda since there's plasma cells in there. Right, by inside hybridization, and they get some unstained. Always. Get some unstained, because yep. if you do show it to one of your hematopathology colleagues, they're probably going to want to order additional stains. Like 20 additional stains. Well, we're not going to judge. Okay. So, so away from the nodule though, what else do we have in here, Kevin? Well, we've got some other smaller lymphoid aggregates next to airways and that kind of looks like a bronchiolitis, kind of yep. a nodular chronic bronchiolitis. Yep. No and, follicles though, so I don't no. think it's follicular bronchiolitis. No, no. So that, that was on the list and I'm not seeing that. Nope. So let's see if any of the other infiltrates have any funny cells in them because sometimes Sometimes when you get lymphocytes around the airways, you can get other things. And look at that. Like the, oh. That's a granuloma. That's a vague collection of histiocytes that okay. pulmonary pathologists okay. like to call granulomas. Maybe this it. is hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Boom. 
we finally got a case of extrinsic allergic alveolitis, alveolitis. except one problem. Those patients with hypersensitivity pneumonitis do not get giant nodules of lymphocytes and plasma cells. Certainly not giant nodules like this. No. So if this patient does have hypersensitivity pneumonitis, there must be something else going on. Yeah, so we're going to give them two diseases, uh, two relatively uncommon diseases. If yeah. we do, we're going to say nodule of lymphoid and then hypersensitivity. I would say that this is too many lymphocytes for hypersensitivity and not enough alveolitis. It's too many nodules uh, in yeah. aggregates of lymphocytes, yeah. not enough of the alveolitis yeah. for hypersensitivity yeah. pneumonitis. I agree. But we do have granulomas. So now I'm kind of scratching my head because we have nodules of inflammatory cells. We have chronic bronchiolitis. I mean, it's really actually quite inflamed there. Chronic bronchiolitis. Those lymphocytes, let's look at those again. They look awfully clear. They do have... Because it's clear cool. lymphocytes. Does that help you? Does that help you when you see a, a sheet like that of lymphocytes with a with a halo of clear cytoplasm. It means they're infiltrating some epithelium. Yeah, they're infiltrating opinion. the epithelium, and they're probably part of the malt. They're the probably lung. part of the malt lymphoma. But we would have to work that up and do some immuno to, to make that diagnosis. But what is going on in the background lung? Is this all malt lymphoma? Well, that's a good question. Does it, does it have to be anything else? Could I mean, it be anything else? Remind me what the what the uh, presentation was radiographically. He's got nodules, vague nodules, and vague patchy nodules. ground glass. Okay. And he's got that thoracic lymphadenopathy. So let's say we do the workup, and we do indeed diagnose this nodule as malt lymphoma. And that would be like let's say all these are CD twenty. Let's these make are it all easy. CD twenty. Okay. It's all malt lymphoma, and there's. A few CD20 positive cells in the rest of this infiltrate, which is true. Right. This was true. There's a few CD20 positive cells, but a lot of these cells were CD3 positive T cells. Right. right. So it's almost like a disimmune, disimmune reaction in the lung. When you get funky uh, combinations of mixed cellularity nodules. Cellular interstitial infiltrates, granulomas, in a patient with malt lymphoma. Right. So, so to get back, remember this whole topic is about clinical and radiologic correlation. And so to get to the, the true etiology, the true source of, of what this patient has, it might help to know that this patient has had chronic infections throughout his whole life. So in your discussion, after you diagnose this, uh, what was your diagnosis on this? It was chronic interstitial pneumonia with bronchiolitis. No, that was the send-in diagnosis. Yeah. Chronic interstitial pneumonia with bronchiolitis. The clinician scratches his head and says, did you know this patient has a weird history because he's had recurrent infections for the last 20 years? Anytime I hear recurrent infections for 20 years, there's two things you have to think about. One, some sort of anatomical abnormality right. that's, that's generating chronic recurrent infections. Right. And then two, immunoglobulin deficiency syndrome. Some sort of immune deficiency syndrome. Right. Or cystic fibrosis, for gosh sake. Or cystic fibrosis, sure. So, so it, it, you, in the setting of low-grade lymphoma, which we were presuming this is just based on the profusion of small lymphocytes, destructive of the lung parenchyma, by the way, because there's no lung in the background there. Right. So, with that history of low-grade lymphoma and a few granulomas in this bronchiolitis here, this funny cellular infiltrate, you probably need to include immunoglobulin deficiency syndromes in your differential if you, if you have no history. Exactly. But this clinician called, the pathologist who sent it in, the clinician called him and said, look, this patient has CVID. Common variable, variable immunodeficiency syndrome. syndrome. Could this have anything to do with it? Absolutely. And you say, absolutely. I will look into that. <laughs> And you go to the textbook and you find out that all the things you see here can occur in association with CVID. But because now you feel like you've stepped out of your depth, you send it to Max, and, and Max doesn't renders eloquently on the whole process of the myriad pathology associated with immunoglobulin deficiency syndromes. Which has all been lumped under this term, which some people hate and some people like, but I do find it a Clinical useful term. Really. term to communicate with clinicians, and the term is granulomatous hyphen lymphocytic interstitial lung disease, shortened to G-L-I-L-D. 
Now, to understand GLILD and to use it appropriately in communicating with clinicians, you have to understand how this term came about. Right. And it came about by a group of clinicians, predominantly, going back and looking at all of the pathology that they saw in association in patients with immunodeficiency, with CVID. So some, cases, some patients had prominent LIP-like patterns. Right. Some cases had prominent granulomatous patterns. Some cases had prominent follicular bronchiolitis patterns. And some cases had a mixture of two or three of those different patterns. Including low-grade lymphomas. Including low-grade lymphomas. So this term, GLILD, is a nice encompassing term that, that includes the spectrum of pathology that might be encountered in the setting of common variable immunodeficiency syndrome and actually broadening that to immunodeficiency syndromes in, in general. general. So, you know, in pulmonary pathology and probably in all areas of specialty pathology, there's two ways to look at disease. You can look at the disease with all of its findings, and then you can look at findings and associate all the diseases where you can see that finding. Right. And once you can do it in both directions, you basically got a mastery of the whole process. So somebody says, I've got a patient who's got wicked follicular bronchiolitis, and you say, oh, Sorry. that can be seen in Sjogren's, rheumatoid arthritis, common variable immunodeficiency syndrome. And then you, somebody says, I've got a patient who's got common variable immunodeficiency syndrome. And you go, oh. Could be follicular bronchiolitis. <laughs> could, could be, be LIP. Could be granulomatous disease. Could be lymphoma. Yeah. Make sure there's not a low-grade lymphoma there. So it's a two-way street. And once you get a handle on that, you will feel powerful when you look at the lung biopsy that has findings like this. Exactly. And I think we've pretty much nailed that. I think so. So you could sign this out descriptively and say the findings are compatible with GLILD when you're talking about actually putting pencil to the paper and how do I, how do I sign this case out. Uh, you could just call it compatible with GLILD as long as you... Or, or arising in the setting of, if it's because you're going to diagnose right. lymphoma. Well, yes, you're as long as you remember to diagnose lymphoma, lymphoma. And then right. say arising in the setting, setting of, of CVID or at, consistent with GLILD. Exactly. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and you enjoyed the uh, little discussion on GLILD here. If you don't, did. Don't forget to like and comment below. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. That's fine too. And uh, thank you very much.